today is wisdom for facing discrimination. So we thought, well, why don't we take on this big subject? Everybody's talking about things right now in our country. And, and um, you know, Pastor, and Andrew, Pastor Andrew and I were discussing what is our next series. You know, we didn't realize that this was going to come up during this time when it feels like we need to talk about this subject. And today I don't, I'm not going to make a, a, a political statement today. Okay. I'm not, that's not what I believe the scripture is telling us. Um, I believe we're, we're just going to talk about what the scripture says about uh, racism and discrimination and all these issues and how we are supposed to act and how we're supposed to be. I think James lays it out uh, very nicely in, this, in the word here. So if you don't mind, um, let's turn to your Bibles to James chapter 2 before I go any further. And I want to read the portion of scripture that we're going to be studying this morning. And then we're going to pray and ask God's favor on his word so we can understand how we as believers should act today. Right? It's not uh, discrimination. Uh, when we say that word, sometimes we think about what happened years ago. And what happened, you know, it's not about me, but James, Pastor James in the scripture here is talking to the church, the believers, and they had, he had an issue with how they were treating people. Let's go ahead and read the word of God. Verse 1 says, My brothers, as believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, don't show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in shady, uh, shabby clothes, also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you sit there or sit on the floor at my feet, have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Verse five. Listen, my dear brothers, have not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom? He promised those who love him, but you have insulted the poor. It is not the rich who are exploiting you. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are slandering the noble name of him whom you belong. <coughs> Verse 8. If you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted, are convinced, convicted by the law as a lawbreaker. For whoever keeps the law, the whole law, and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but you do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy trumps over judgment. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you for your word this morning. I thank you, God, that in the church we find that this discrimination is happening all over the world. And Father, I ask right now to forgive us. Today, as we talk about immigration, race, caring for the needy, the poor, we're going to have to examine our 
ourselves first. Amen. Amen. And with everything going on in uh, in the world today, we have to take and examine ourselves as individuals before God. And I just want to challenge you a little bit this morning on where you're at. So this, this sermon is not going to be about, don't think about this sermon today as it's about somebody else. So you're going to hear the words, you're going to think, man, this person needs to hear this sermon, all right? Don't, don't, don't do that today. I want you today to listen to the Spirit of God and examine yourself, amen, and see where you're at in this, in, in this issue. We have a unique church here. I, I was sitting back there thinking, man, this is amazing. We have people from all over the world that are in this body right now. Yeah. I, I can't wait to it expands to make it even greater uh, multicultural family of believers. I believe what God told me in 2005 that all nations will be worshiping here. All nations will come to Jesus through our ministry. And so I still hang on to that. And so even this morning, you don't look, look, at, look at our numbers, but look at the diversity we have. Why? Because we believe this is what the gospel says. But I want to challenge you that if you are never corrected by the word of God or by God, if you never receive uh, instruction about who you are, you maybe the God that you're worshiping is not the God of the Bible. Maybe the God that you're worshiping is somebody you made up to be like you. Yeah. Right? I mean, the only one that was in perfect harmony with God was Jesus. And as we give ourselves fully to the Lordship of Jesus Christ in every area of our life, we're always being changed. Are we not? Or being challenged. In this area of discrimination, especially because we look at people in the eyes of what you grew up in, where we started from, where you, what your, uh, what maybe you were taught, or some preconceived idea of, of taking care of yourself and protection, or protectionism, where you just protect what we have here and not really be open to what God is doing. But I believe our God wants to challenge us to look at people in his very image. He created everyone, did he not? Yes. And he created yes. us, all of us, in his very image. Yes. And if God created us all in his image, and when we are challenged and discriminate or we are racist in our thoughts and our actions, then we are saying God did make something right. This, oh, I have all these notes and I'm just kind of going way off already, but I just want to, I just want to, because this is, this is a subject, and I'll get to the, the scripture in just a second, but I just want to tell you my heart, Cap, Capital City Church is not making a political statement today. We have not. What we do, what we do want to do is make a, a gospel presentation that what we believe is according to the word of God. It's not what you believe in your heart about other people. It's different. Uh -huh. And I'm talking to you now because if you were in my living room right now, we'd all be sitting down. I'd be sitting on the couch with you and, I'd be just wanted to, and that's what I want to be to this morning. I want you to know from my heart that if we could just change an aspect of our thinking and our actions that we could actually really share the gospel with the world and the world can be changed. It's possible because that's what Christ mandated for us to do. So it's not impossible to uh, make this happen. Amen? Amen. That's right. <laughs> I was, uh, discrimination is happening here in our church, or some of the people in our church have been discriminated against. And I'm going to share two stories. I talked to uh, Dion uh, a couple weeks ago, and he was telling me how at the previous work that he had, how he got passed over for promotion. He felt that it was because who he was, and the color of his skin, if you will. Uh, being a young black man going to college, finishing up his degree, there's certain expectations as you go into the workforce. Uh, and skill level that you get, but then you grow in that skill level. And when everybody's being promoted ahead of you and you know you're better than them, it's hard to hold your tongue, isn't it? Yes. It is, but I talked to him during this time. I said, listen, um, Dion, you're, you're doing your job is up to God. Mm -hmm. And he 
he took comfort in that, the fact that he's going to do his job as unto the Lord. And the Lord promotes and the Lord demotes. I believe that's true also. But there is this thing that happens in our society today that should happen. And today, I wish he was here this morning, but today he got, he's got his dream job today, like just a week ago. I mean, he just got his dream job, more pay, more benefits, more than, yeah, God can call it. Really did. And I was talking to uh, my son-in-law, Jesus, about discrimination. And when he, when something like this happened to him, he's telling me, I'm, I, I guess I use names because we're just family, right? And it's real. So being from Mexico, he's working at a, at a sandwich shop in town. And a gentleman comes in and asks, that was going to order his food, but would not give Jesus his order because he was from Mexico. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, how do you think that makes him feel standing there? This guy says, I want to give, I want to order food, but I'm not going to order with you. I'm going to order with somebody else. That happened just this last couple of years. I mean, not that long ago. So this discrimination is going on. I want to tell you a story about when I first ever experienced somebody discriminating or have a real racist comment. I was about eight or nine years old, and I lived in Waukesha, Wisconsin, and they, in, at that age, they had this, you know, back then, this is a long time ago, but they used to have this group that uh, would sell candy door to door. Um, and I was part of that group, so I, my mom signed me up, I went with about five or six other kids, this guy would drive us around, we'd go to different neighborhoods, and we'll sell, sell um, a 20 cent box of candy for a dollar or whatever it was, but we made, I made a few bucks every week doing that on a Saturday. We were driving and I was really good at doing that. I mean, I sold a lot of candy. I was like the number one little kid that sold. So I got to sit in the front seat of the car. We went from one neighborhood to the, that was the reward. We got to sit, sit in the front seat of the car. And so I got to sit in the front seat of the car, and we're driving to another area. This first time, the first time I ever heard anybody say anything derogatory about any race or anything. And we were driving to the neighborhood, and we were behind the car that was an African-American family that was in the car, and they were driving a little bit slower than my, the boss wanted to drive. And he made this comment, I'll never forget, I won't repeat it today. But it stuck with me. Uh, this is not right. I mean, those were people and family driving to wherever they were driving to, and I thought this was, it, it burned in my heart. Fast forward a few years later, I became a Christian. I was 19 years old. And we, I became a Christian in North Carolina. And when we went to church, it was awesome. We had multicultural church. We had a lot of people but there's a distinct difference between churches down in the south. You have black churches, you have Spanish churches, you have white churches. None of them, they'll never meet. You know, it's like there's this barrier for whatever reason. But uh, when I started hearing those comments in the church, it hurt me. It's like, how can you be a Christian? And Paul and, and James, Pastor James, says the same thing. How can you be a believer? and say and think and do things that is racist or discriminated against other people. Because are we not, according to the Word of God, equal? Yes. Yeah. All of us, men, women, right? Whatever nation you come from, it doesn't matter. We're all equal in God's eyes. And if we are equal in God's eyes, then we should treat each other with the same respect you treat anyone else, right? Yeah. And that's with love, right? So let's look at uh, the first part here. It says, Dear brothers, as believers in our lo glorious Lord Jesus Christ. So he's talking to the believers now. He's not talking to unbelievers. This is important to understand. As you read most of Scripture, instruction is given to the early church and to be careful about how they treat other people. So here Pastor James is saying to us, you're, he's, he's addressing, now after chapter 1, he, he addresses again, brothers. He's making an emphasis, brothers and sisters, listen to me. This is very important, what I'm about to say. I want you to understand that we cannot show favoritism in a church. He says, in, in glorious Lord Jesus Christ, don't, don't means what? Don't. don't. I looked it up in the Greek. It means don't. <laughs> I mean, I studied it out. I go through three, four commentaries and, and my, my, my Bible apps and stuff, and I looked it up, and don't means don't. So don't do this, right? <laughs> Pastor's done preaching. He said, don't do it, so we're not going to do it no more. 
It's that simple, right? Go and love each other, hug each other, uh, help the poor, help the needy, yeah. right? Help those that are being uh, discriminated against, help the poor, do it. Right. God bless you in Jesus' name. It's more than that, though, isn't it? Yes. We have to get in our spirit. We have to change our thinking. We have to understand that when we think of something, I was driving down the road, I'm preparing this sermon, I'm driving down the road just, just um, Friday, Friday afternoon, driving past West Town Mall, and there's a guy standing there with a little sign. Yeah. Right? And I know because of the news, these guys are just a group of people trying to make money, and they go from one corner to the next corner, and that's what, it's not poor people trying to make money, it's pe just people, a group of people got together, they're doing this. So anyway, so right away, in my mind, I start to judge that person. Uh. Right? I'm not supposed to. I'm just telling you, I'm just being real with you, right? I had to go, in my mind, I said, I'm going to be preaching on this on Sunday, and here I am now thinking ill of this person. And what I, this is a thought that helped me. God created that person in his image. That's what helped me. That person was made in the image of God. So if he's out there begging for money, if that's what he does all day long, uh, looks like a college student from UW. You know, probably needed lunch money. I don't know what he needed. I didn't really know. But the point is, I, I have to not process the thought that would cause me to judge that person. Amen. So I said, okay, God, I just pray for him. Whatever he needs, God, you provide for him. Amen, as I drove by. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the point is, I didn't... It wouldn't get in there, because when it gets in here, then it becomes a thought. A thought, we know, as we talked about earlier in James, becomes a sin. If we think on that or act on that. And we can't let that thought in our mind create us to action or a bad thought that dwells in us, and then that, that becomes part of our character. We don't want that to happen. So when you get those bad thoughts about people, you need to get rid of it quickly. Right? So look what James says. Don't show favoritism. He talks about this man, right? Suppose a man comes in your, in your meeting wearing gold and jewelry. Man, if a guy came in wearing gold and jewelry and $100 bills were falling off of him, you know, we'd probably be falling around with the offering bag, right? <laughs> we have needs, right? We need, no, but we don't treat anybody, we don't treat anybody. We try our hardest in this congregation to treat all People, no matter what your income, no matter what you're from, whatever nation, equally because we love, we are all children of God. But this is some, uh, something that we have to work on. Is that not true? Is this something we have to work on or not? Yes. yes. Come on. This is something that the yes. Holy Spirit is saying to us that we have to quit judging people and we need to treat each other equally. Talk about fine clothes. And then a poor man comes in with shabby clothes, also comes in. And you want to judge that person right away. Here, sit in the back. Sit over here. Don't sit up front. We, went, we saved this for all the people that have money. I've been to those meetings. Yes. It's horrible. Yes. The Spirit of God's not there. That's right. That's sin. Mm -hmm. I've been to right. all shouting and hooting and hollering, and they, have, they got all the fancy people up front and all the, all the guys in the back, you know. I'm like, that is not God. There's no spirit in there. Right. They can try to conform. They can try to make it. They can hoop and holler all they want, but the Spirit of God is not in that. That's why I love being in this place. I love coming here because yes. God's Spirit is in this building. Yes. Because we try our hardest to not judge people by who or what they are. Verse mm -hmm. 4 says, Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? So when you think about another person because of their color of their skin, or their their uh, their a uh, class, or and I know in the, in the Indian community, whatever caste they come from, if you start discriminating, when you're a Christian, you can't think that way. That's right. Those thoughts come from the devil. That's right. Yeah. If you didn't know that, that's where those thoughts come from. When a, when a Christian is talking about something that is discriminating towards another person or is racist in its thoughts or in your thoughts, that's from the enemy. And that can cause sin in your life if you dwell on those things. I love Pastor James as he goes to verse 5 and says, Listen, my dear brothers, have not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith? Why does that happen? 
Why does a poor person, if you will, a needy person, is rich in faith? Because there's no hope in the world. Maybe there's situations where they can't have a job or they, they're not getting enough pay and they're, they have a family and, and you know, they, they cry out to God. And we know it in our own lives. You know, as you get up, I mean, Tina and I do the same thing. You know, we went from making $400 a month when we were in the military as young believers. And we, we prayed over everything. Prayed over the car so the car would run. Pray over the, the food so the food got to multiply the food. We pray over our house so the, the cockroaches would attack us at night. We, had, we, had, we lived in a really, really dumpy place because we had no other choice. But, you know, and we would cry out to God. And we pray for our lost friends. And God would just, we see hundreds, not hundreds, we've seen a lot of people come to Jesus. And, you know, and, and then as you go up, as you get more well, then things change. Why does that happen? Because you're not relying on God. But if you would just rely on God in your time of need all the time, or maybe when you have wealth, you have an attitude of gratitude that, hey, God gave me this, and so I'm going to thank Him anyway. And so you have the same faith that you had when you were first a believer. Yes. A lot of us do that. Man, when I first was saved, when I first was a believer, man, man, I, I would talk to the trees and the trees would get saved. I mean, I'm just... You know, it got this, um, I pray for people, and God would heal them, and it was just amazing things that happened. And now 30, 40 years later, it's like, oh, well, yeah, I, I talk about the times in the past. What is God doing now? Amen. What is God doing now in your heart about this issue of discrimination? Like, we really have to put that in the forefront of our mind. Even today, we have people that are scared about everything that's going on in our government, and all that kind of stuff. Don't be scared. Let's cling to the gospel. Yes. We're Christians first. We have a hope that's, right. that's not of this world. That's right. Amen? And so James goes on to explain this. He says, um, Has not God chosen the poor in the eyes of the world to, to be rich uh, in faith and to inherit the kingdom of God? Now, inherit the kingdom of God now in your life, right? He prom promised those to, he promised those who love him. So, you have, I mean, we have to love him. If you love God, you cannot discriminate. The two are incompatible. You can't love and obey God and then discriminate. They can't, it just doesn't mix. That means you're a Christian or if you discriminate or you're racist, then you're actually, I probably could probably say this with all confidence, you're probably not a believer. Yes. Did I really say that? <clears throat> yeah, if you are racist in your thoughts, in your heart, you can't look at people without making a rude comment or a rude thought in your heart, or you, you say something that's inappropriate, then I question the love that you have for God. Amen. You can't, the two don't mix. It's like oil and water. It just doesn't mix. That's right. <laughs> Just keeping it real this morning. But if you insult the poor, it is not the rich who are exploiting you. Who's exploiting you? The rich are exploiting you. They're dragging you to court. They're, they're, they're the ones that are, they got the money to do so, I guess, you know, too. I was thinking about that. They probably have the money to do so. I'm going to sue you, right? You hear that all the time. And look at verse 7. This is, Pastor James is saying this in a way that this is like right to your heart. I mean, he didn't even bypass like trying to talk nice or anything. He's like, let's get to the point here, guys, right? He says, uh, are they not the ones who are slandering the noble name of him who you belong? What is the name that the rich are slandering? This is Jesus. Jesus. They're slandering Jesus. Well, he wasn't really the Son of God. Well, the Word of God is not real. They got so many versions out. We don't even know if it's true or not. I mean, they got so many. They, they discredit everything that has to do with Jesus or Christianity or marriage or anything that we stand for according to the Word of God. They want to make it almost nothing. They mock it. We stand for him. No, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for my sins. Let me tell you, the day I, I had faith to believe that Jesus was real, He changed my life, and He can change yours too. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me give you a definition of... Let me give you two definitions, okay? One, the dictionary definition of, of, of discrimination, 
and a Christian de a de definition. It says, the, uh, the, the dictionary says, the main, uh, the mistreatment of different categories of people, especially on the grounds of race, age, religion, or gender. Discrimination. Christian discrimination is when our behavior, what we think and say and do, when our behavior reflects the person we see in front of us and not what the Spirit of God sees within them. So we look at people, we say, we're just looking at the outside, we're looking at what their clothes look like, we're looking at what their what kind of car they drive, where they were, we're just, you know, we're categorizing them. When we look at the outside, but we're not looking when God, when I looked at that young man, right, on the side road, I didn't look at him initially how God sees him. That's what needs to change in me, too. How does God see that person? Maybe your employer, your, your, you know, you have employees underneath you. How do you look at your employees? How do you look at the people that, that work for you? How do you look at your neighbor? If you look at them through the eyes of God, you look at them that God created that person. And that person, this is what I see. And Annie mentioned, and, and this, our missionary coming the same way, we look at people either lost or saved. That's how I look at people. Are they going to make it to heaven, or are they going to go to hell? Because that's the choices if you read the end of the book, is what's going to happen. Right? So we know that that's the options. Yes. And we gather together today because we want to encourage each other, but we gather together to strengthen ourselves so we can go out and, and complete the mission that God's given us. So we can't look at people like the world looks at them. We cannot look at people and what we hear and see on TV. We cannot look at the world, like they look at, or the educators look at, as the, as the politicians look at, we can't look at people like that. We have a different and higher calling Amen. to lead them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what we're supposed to do. John 7, 24 says, Stop judging by mere appearance, but instead judge correctly. I just said it. We look at the appearance, we're judging wrongly. But we look at it, we're judging, say, this person's a lost, they need Jesus, then we're judging properly. So there's a right way to judge, and there's a wrong way to judge. If we discriminate, we, we erase us in our thoughts, then that's wrong. Does anybody know that today? I hope you all know that today. It's wrong. We can't do that as a believer. But we can judge right and correctly, and the way we judge correctly is that we say, this person needs Jesus. What can I do to help them? This poor person needs some handout. They need some clothes. We need to share Jesus with them. Amen. Right? We're not just going to give food out for any reason. I'm not just going to give out food. Listen, I'm going to give out food, and I'm going to share with people that the reason I'm doing this is because Jesus provided for me when I had need, and you have need. I want to tell you how much God loves you, and he's given you this food. That's right. I remember the first time I ever did anything like that. Where I helped a poor person. I used to, when I first was a believer, I used to go out to the uh, Onslow Beach and I used to pray every Saturday morning. Tina would, you know, be sleeping and I'd get out of bed and I would take some money out of our jewelry box, our extra cash that we had, which about, you know, not much. But we put in this jewelry box on our, on our dresser. And I'd go and I'd get like 50 cents because being on the beach for a couple hours, you get, you get thirsty. So I used to buy a Coke or something on the way home. And that's what I was doing. So I went to the box, I got 50 cents out, and I was going to put it in my pocket, and the Holy Spirit says, no, take more. And for us, it was, it was 20 bucks. 20 bucks for us was like a thousand back then. It was a lot of money. And uh, I actually closed the jewelry box and started walking out of the bedroom, and then I had to go back and open it up and take the $20. So I'm like, you know, I was like arguing with the Holy Spirit. And I went out to the beach, prayed, read my Bible. It was just an awesome time with God. And as I was driving back, I still didn't know what the money was for, but as I was driving back, there was this young couple, and a little girl, about three or four years old, they were picking up beer cans and soda cans on the beach, on the side of the road. And the Holy Spirit says, stop. And I knew exactly that money, that $20 was for them. And if you've ever been on a beach road, there's not places you can park on the side of a beach road. It's just sand. It's like a cement or a black top, and then it's all sand. 
there's this one spot right there where I could park. That was it. It was like hard dirt right there. I pulled right over. It's just a little bit longer than my car. That was it. I got in the car and I gave it to them. You know, it was the greatest moment in my life. I remember it to this day. To be able to give that. That was the first time that I actually gave out of knowing that I was giving because God told me to do God wants to help the poor. We shouldn't judge them. Judge them rightly. They need Jesus and they need our help. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Kirby and their family and most of our missionaries are always dealing with refugees overseas. They're collecting money all the time. Matter of fact, if you're not giving monthly to our missions department, giving, we give about $400 a month right now. Would you just give extra every month to missions? $25. If everybody here gave $25, bucks, it would be great. It would be awesome. We can help. They're helping refugees. I mean, they're taking everything. All the money, all the resources that they have, they're buying food, diapers, they're buying everything that these people need. And they're giving it in the name of Jesus. They're not just giving it out. They're saying, Does Jesus, and these are mostly Muslim people. And they're, they're, they're leaving the persecution that's happening across the world. So they're, they're giving, and they're saying in Jesus, and hundreds and hundreds of uh, refugees are coming to Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, I mean, let's, let's pray for them, amen, and let's see. You can't judge people unjustly. You've got to judge them right. Just, that's in John 7, 24. First Timothy 5, 21 says, I charge, I, I charge you in the sight of God. He's talking to Timothy because Timothy's setting up a church. church. He says, I charge you in, in the sight of God and Jesus Christ and the elected angels to keep those instructions without partiality and to do nothing out of favoritism. To this is Paul talking to Timothy, teaching Timothy. Levit Leviticus 19.33-34. When a foreigner resides among you, listen to this, in your land, do not mistreat them. Man. He's talking to believers. Even the Jewish people back in Leviticus, it's talking, don't mistreat people that are part of, that come and be part of your land, that want to be part of you. The foreigners reside among you. You must treat them as they were native born. Love them as yourself, for you were foreigners in Egypt. Right. I am the Lord your God. This is God talking to children of Israel. Treat people like you treat your neighbor, like yourself. Amen? Or, or sojourners, to sojourners, or people that are coming through or, or not really have a permanent place to live, right? We have that now in our, in our country. We have a lot of people that need our help. For the Lord your God is God, this is Deuteronomy 10, 17 to 19. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. If God doesn't show any partiality, I mean, he's telling everybody, think about this, everybody in the world, no matter where they're from, what name a country, name a region, God shows no partiality. His salvation is for everyone. His love is for everyone. Amen? He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widows, and he loves the foreigners residing among you, giving them food and clothing. He's telling them what to do. And you are to love those who are foreigners, for you yourself were foreigners. He reminded them, you were hopeless. We were hopeless before we came to Jesus. We had no hope. We accepted Jesus Christ, just like we were in Egypt. There was no hope for them. And then God delivered them. We were foreigners, if you will. We were unbelievers. We didn't know God. And then we knew God. And now he delivered us and loved us, too. Even though we were, we were foreigners, he loved us. And then we accepted his salvation, right? Amen. Same way. Same way. We did it. When we love on people, we're hoping they come to know the full knowledge of Jesus Christ as their Lord, that they become believers, followers of Christ, surrender all of their life to the Lordship of Jesus, just like you do. Amen? That's what we're supposed to do. Another verse in Ezekiel. This is like, this is like the wrong motive. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah? Sodom? So in Sodom, you know, they had a lot of things that they didn't do right. Here's another thing they didn't do right. Ezekiel 16, 49. Now this was the sin of your, your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, unconcerned. They did not help the poor and the needy. They were haughty and didn't uh, and did detestable things before for me. Therefore, I did away with them. So, I mean, this, there's a sin in this. If we don't do, if we don't help the poor and needy, I'm just, I think we're like we kind of missed it. Yeah. 
If we come to church every Sunday and we think that it's just about us here, then we missed it. I mean, I want you to come. I want you to be encouraged. I want to strengthen you. I want to challenge you in your belief. But there's, well, there's something we should do the rest of the week or even Sunday afternoons. Like, we should maybe be helping people. What would happen if every one of us knew, you probably, everyone knows somebody that's down and out or needs some help or hand up, right? We all probably could, or go find somebody. And then love on them and share Jesus with them and see their life change because God now, the Holy Spirit is in their lives and God can take them out of their poverty and bring them to some place better than where they're at. He needs your help to do that, amen? I sound like a politician right now. Right? You, you gotta go do it. Amen. You gotta do it with God's help. He loves people. He loves all people. <laughs> God, thank God he didn't discriminate against me. Thank God he reached out when I was nothing and pulled me out of my junk. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. I mean, he's doing it for you today. I know we all have needs today. I know we need to be inspired. I know we need Jesus. Here's another one. Malachi 3 5. So I will come to you. So I will come to put you on trial. I will be quick to testify against sorcerers, adulterers, perjurers, against those who defraud laborers for the, of their wages, who oppress the widows and the fatherless, and deprive the foreigner among you of justice. But do not fear me, says the Lord Almighty. He's going to judge you the way we treat others. He's going to judge you for all the other sins. Don't think about this. Let's go to verse uh, 8. It says, if, if, uh, James chapter uh, 2, verse 8. If you really keep the royal law found in the scripture, the royal law, James says, is love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law by, as a lawmaker. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point of it is guilty of breaking it all. That's kind of cool because he, he clumps in, James, Pastor James, clumping in together discrimination with adultery and being a murderer. Yeah. Same thing, same sin, same, same uh, guiltiness, if you will. You, and he says you can, but so as we study the word of God, we know that the great commandment Jesus gave, he says that he will fulfill all the law, all the law and everything the prophet said, if you would do one thing, or two things really, love God and love your neighbor. If we do that, we fulfill the law. We won't be a lawbreaker. We won't be condemned. We won't be judged for being a lawbreaker. If we love God, First, because when you love God and you worship God and you want to be with God, he, that just fills you up, right? I love you, Father. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus. We should say that every day, every minute. Thank you for saving me and setting me free from my sin. Thank you for taking the guilt of my sin away. Amen. I can be free from that now. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, we're falling in love with Father God. I love the songs we sang today because it's like focused on Jesus, right? Jesus, let, and I was thinking about sitting and trying to get the words right and everything up there. So sorry about that. But, <laughs> but we need to love Jesus. I remember when, as a young believer, and this is what re, I'm getting back to in my personal life now, is falling in love with Jesus, realizing what he did for me. How he set me free from all my sins. How he's given me a call in my life. How he's doing so much for me. That I love you, Jesus. Because when you love God and you love Jesus, the Holy Spirit's going to lead you to love others. He's gonna, it's not going to be a question, do I love that person or not? I'm going to love that person. And I'm going to see that person as God sees that person. I'm not going to see that person as all the junk that I was taught in my life. Or all the things I see in the world. If you judge people like the world judges people, you're wrong. You're wrong. That's right. You have to say, help oh, me, I feel it heavy in my spirit because I said that. But I'm just telling you, you have to examine that. And you have to get past that. Well, oh, Pastor, you don't know what kind of stuff they say and what they do. It doesn't matter. <coughs> it don't matter. It don't matter what they, how they act. They could be the most horrible person. There's people coming to Jesus, ISIS people coming to Jesus, 
because Christians love the, their executors. Yes. How can you go, let him be had your head cut off, and still show love and respect to the person that's going to do that? Only Jesus can do that. Only Jesus can put you through that. And we're not being executed for faith in a Madison, Wisconsin. Not yet, anyway, I guess. So what's the problem with loving people? Verse 12. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Speak and act like you're being judged righteously by our Heavenly Father, because we're going to be judged anyway. So before you say something, make sure it's life and love and grace and peace and joy. Instead of things that tear down and judge. Or maybe I should say it this way, maybe not what we speak, what we text. Huh? What are we texting? What are we saying? bring it to modern times. We've got to be careful. Everything that you say and do is being judged, going to be judged. As believers, the unrighteous are going to be judged for their acceptance or denial of Jesus. We're going to be judged by what we do for him. But we'll talk about this one time. Because judgment without mercy will show to every, anyone who has not been merciful. And I love this last couple words in the, bo in the bottom of verse uh, 12, 13. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Show mercy. God, has, through His Son, showed you mercy. God showed us mercy. We didn't deserve it. He gave me mercy. I didn't deserve a thing. I was a horrible person before Jesus came into my life. I didn't deserve it. I remember sitting there thinking, I don't deserve this God. I don't deserve this God. I don't deserve this love I'm feeling right now. I don't deserve none of it. I'm a horrible person. The moment I repented of my sins and asked Jesus to be my Savior, I remember that, just like it's today. I, don't, I remember thinking, I don't deserve this. He showed me my sins, if you will, in my mind's eye. And as he was erasing them, it was like on a, 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 a chalkboard, but I, I think it was an early whiteboard. I didn't know because it was, we didn't have whiteboard back then. But anyway, it was like he was just taking in my sins, and they were gone. One after another, as I, I mean, I was only 19, so, but I had some stuff in my life, and it was just, she was taking, I didn't deserve that. I remember thinking, no, God, no, I don't deserve this, I don't deserve this, and he gave it to me, and he showed me mercy. We could, come on, how much greater, I mean, if God did that for you, why can't we just give it away a little bit? Yeah. Show some grace. Yeah. Love on some people that maybe is unlovable by the world's standards. But not by God. God sees every person. He created it. Go back to Genesis. Read that again. When God said, He created the man and the woman in our image. He created man and woman in the image of God. So every person that we're judging and discriminating against is. We're judging against God's creation. God made that person. You can't do it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. You don't hate yourself, do you? If you do, we'll talk about that too. Love your neighbor as yourself. I have I have about six, seven questions here to end today. I, we're not gonna have any music. We're not gonna maybe we just put some music on the overhead. Just some soft music. I want you to take your bulletins, if you will, <clears throat> turn them over, and I'm gonna give you some questions. 
and just you answer them. Don't show this to anybody. It's between you and God. I want to take a moment here, and I want you to take your bulletins, and if you need a pen, ask somebody who has a purse next to you. And write, you might not have to write these down, but I'm just going to say them, and then you can write the answers down, okay? What do you think is your starting point in the area of discrimination? Where are you going to start? What are you going to ask God to forgive you for? Maybe it's repentance. What do you think is your starting point in the area of discrimination? Number two. How would it look different for you to start with the gospel? Look at people through the eyes of God instead of through the world. <clears throat> Number three. Who is someone that is part of a group that you have discriminated against but could pursue to know better this week. are specific ways that you will choose to see all the people around you in the light of the gospel. How can you choose to see people's weakness as a common effect of the fall? Sin into the world when people start doing bad things. How can you see them as a effect of the fall? choose to see people as those very people that Jesus died for. 